Hi, I'm Ron Frederick. And Crystal Husband. We are live on Game Changers with Vicki Abelson. And our guest tonight is Carlos Calvo. Yeah! And they did that so brilliantly! Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody out there. Pete, George, where are you? You're doing stand-up in Las Vegas. If you're in Las Vegas, go see Pete. And if you're not, you're here to hear Carlos. So Carlos is going to open. He's going to start us off with a song. Should we do what, it? What, are you, what are you going to play? I'm going to play a special request. It, mine? Yes. And what is it? Hanging by a string. I love that. We've song. all felt that way, haven't we? Oh, <laughs> today. I know. Sing along. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting us up on. On. on I'm not just. I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm just. What do you think? Oh, I, I'll just be over here. I, I, I'm paying attention to Carlos. I just have to get it up so I see. I have to get it up. That's what he said. I have to get it up so I can see. Wait, you're, you're, you're doing a very long intro because yeah, I'm, intro. I keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm done talking now. You can doubt me. You can roll your eyes. So Spotify, iTunes, CarlosCalvo.com. You can hit all of the. Uh, and that's where they can albums. find your. Okay, yeah. so are there are there CDs? It EPs, is on a record album. called Further Down the Line. It's one of, one of my more recent. Uh, is my most recent album release because people used to do albums. I love out. Al- it I will always be. Too. It will always be albums. Please to keep me. saying I, that. I yeah because I do I do call them albums because no. CD no. CD. But I but I have released no. In other words, some now some people just release. I have released a few singles since uh, then as well. But but that one was on uh, part of a large package of a large package inspiring of songs. and motivating songs. That, that's a great song. What what inspired that one? 
Uh, desperation, <laughs> the usual. You know? <laughs> so, you know, Carlos, before we get into your story, which yes. if, for those of you who tuned in for Carlos and you've got a bunch of friends watching, Peter Shepard. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a Love Southern Peter. boy, and I can tell you that Carlos does the absolute best cover of Skinner's Tuesdays Gone. Ooh, uh, we watch might, it. You know, we might, I'm afraid to do covers on yeah. Facebook, but we might have to have it's Carlos tricky. give us a taste of that. Um, hi, Phil Isaacson. Hi, Gerald. Hi, Daniel. Um, hi, Eileen. I'm saying hello to people. Hi, Rick. W. Conway. Great to hear Carlos over on the East Coast. Walt, what's up, buddy? Ah, uh, nice. You. Um, so, so, we're going to get, for all of you who are tuning in for Carlos, which is most of you, I have a couple friends on there. Anyway, um, but but I, I, I have to tell a little story that happened to me today because it's, it's so pressing. And Please. It's something that a lot of people go through, and I just want to tell my little tale because it has a happy Please ending. Please do, yes. Happy endings are so important <laughs> and so unusual. Some, but but I but I also you wanted, were hanging by a string for a second there. I was hanging by a string. So okay, so here's my story. I'm going to tell it as as quickly as I can, uh, succinctly as I can. But I went um, for a mammogram last week, which is something that we women, if we should do. And I went, and it was one of the first times that I was, wasn't nervous at all, which should tell you right away you're going to get fucked. Because in the past, I've had a couple of things where they didn't squish hard enough and I had to go back. Yeah. Or, you know, I've had a couple of scares. And, um, but I really wasn't nervous, and it went really smoothly, and I felt really good about it. And I left in a good mood. And I, on Sunday, went, did you know Suzanne Wall? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So I went to her memorial on Sunday, and Suzanne, uh, for those of you who don't know her, an, an amazing comedian, she, uh, an actress, uh, was the host of House Hunters for years, yeah. and she died very prematurely in her mid fifties of breast cancer, and recently, and we had there was a memorial on Sunday, and I was we were many of us were there, and we were wearing yellow uh, cor- uh, wool things for her, and it was very emotional, and I had done a. a a thing for her here because she she came to women who write she sat on that couch in my living room every month for like 10 years like I met she, her here did and you her husband her husband's awesome Je- well not Jeff's husband man. boyfriend oh, sorry, Jeff, Jeff is sorry, an Jeff. amazing and great musician excellent guitar, yes yeah. plays in the Lieutenant Dan band yeah. he's amazing with Gary Sinise and uh, they sat on that couch like every month and she way before, for years and years and years and um, just a huge loss and I've lost, and many of us have, people to cancer, a, a number of people to cancer, and I've lost three very close women friends to breast cancer in right. recent years. And uh, so anyway, so I went for the thing, I went to the memorial, and I, I am woken on the phone at 10 o'clock yesterday morning by my gynecologist saying, Vicki, did you hear from the breast center yet? These are not words you want to hear. Hmm. No, I didn't. Well... Don't get worried, but, you know, there was a little asymmetry. A what? He said, that just means something with vague borders, and it doesn't mean anything. He said, I make this call 10 times a day. It's never turned into anything. Dial it down. Don't get nervous. He said, I'm going to fax you over the prescription. I said, you're going to fax? Who the fuck has a fax machine? (laughs) Do you have a fax machine? How old is your uh, OBGYN? I mean, like, (laughs) a fax machine? So he said, well, otherwise, I'll put it in the mail. I said, no, you can't put it in the mail. I said... I need to take care of this now, right? So, because I have to go get retested and do all of that. So, I'm freaking out. Um, He said, well, call my office. I'll try to get them. Maybe they can email it to you, but um, they're very busy. They probably can't do it today. These are not words I want to hear. I call the office. It turns out the woman is fantastic, and she immediately faxes it to the breast center. I call the breast center. They say, we have an opening in December. Well, I don't know how well you know me, Carlos. Uh, but do well I seem enough. like a woman that I'm, is going to wait till December? You, yeah, and wait for the mail to come. <laughs> and wait for the, at the same yeah, time. These are not going to happen. So I said, please, you know, please, you know, I'm going to be crazy. And she said, well, let me see if, I have, if there's a cancellation. No cancellation. She, I said, oh, my God. And she said, well, let me make a phone call. She gets back on. She said, I have... Great news. I can see you. We can see you tomorrow at wow. one o'clock. Which now, is today. Which is today. Wow. And normally on a show day, 
I don't do anything else. It's all prep for the show. I'm watching your videos. I'm reacquainted. And even though you're doing that anyway, let's face it, you're normally watching my videos. I am, and and I know you well, and I know your music well. So I listen to your music anyway. I don't just do it because you're on the show. So anyway, so I went. I'm I'm going to do this thing, and I just empty nested. My kids don't live with me anymore. I live alone, and I'm going to go through this thing, right? Now, it turns out I have this fabulous, amazing person in my life. He couldn't be with me physically, but he saw me through the whole thing. He was FaceTiming me and calling me all through the night, and, you know, my kids were okay. Okay. Um, (laughs) They they didn't exactly (laughs) rally the way up. My mother, basically, my mother who would ask everything, you know, like, I'm so sorry. I love you. That was it. And I didn't hear from her again. It's like, Mm. what? Anyway, people's reactions were very interesting. Uh, And I got very judgmental and I had resentments and all kinds of things. No. But (laughs) what I've learned, Carl, what I learned through this experience is that everybody shows up as best they can. And Crystal and I were talking about this earlier is that, you know, we do our best to show up for this woman. Crystal, her husband, shows up for people. The music muse, like nobody else in the world, this woman shows up for people. And I didn't call Chris. I didn't ask Crystal because she would have shown up for me like big time. No <laughs> doubt about it. But anyway, so um, so I was going to this, so I went to this thing and, you know, I I was tr- I was praying. I, I'm, I'm a 12-stepper. I have a higher power. I'm not religious, but I believe in a higher power. I said prayers, I put notes in my God can, I I asked people to pray for me, which I never do. I always pray for other people and I never remember to ask for help myself. So that's another lesson I learned. I had a lot of people praying for me and I went and they, um, this is too long a story, I'm gonna try to speed this up. So anyway, so I go in and they, um, they say, okay, so we're gonna do this diagnostic mammogram and I'm gonna squish you and compress you more and Either it's tissue that's on tissue, and once we squeeze it, it goes, we see it's normal, or it's a cyst or, it's a, um, or a mass. Mm-hmm. And she uses the word mass. mass yeah. Wrong word. Yeah, it's not so now word. I'm in a panic. So then, And she says, and if it's not squish normal, we'll, ha- we'll do an ultrasound. Yeah. So she does the squishing, and she says, okay, now it's time for the ultrasound. Oh, so what does that mean to not me? Not squish normal. Not squish normal. Now it's a cyst or a... Or a or, or a ma- yeah, that. I'm freaking the fuck out. Now they move me into the room for the ultrasound. The woman who's doing the ultrasound, dead, not a smile, not a look, not a, doesn't say a word. She's doing the thing. And I'm like, oh my God. But I figure that before it's over, her face will show me that stress or... So her face kind of relaxed. Where she said, I'm going to bring this to the radiologist and I'll be back and we're going to give you the results before you leave. We're going to check the facts machine. We're going to check the facts. <laughs> the fact. And I'm sitting there, and, and that was the longest, like, eight minutes of my life. I mean, that whole process between waiting. And um, she came back in and with a big smile and said, it's normal. And it did compress normally. I said, well, why did the other woman? No. Hmm. Anyway, my point of this being, it could have gone the other way. God forbid. Yeah. It goes the other way for a lot of people. Yeah. I pray for people every day. I, um, who, who have much, and I was just sharing at a meeting on Monday that I have no problems today because there are people that have all these health issues and people that, and here I get this news the next day. So why does it happen in that sequence of events? Well, for me, it was a humbling lesson in not having expectations of other people not having resentments. What, what, what do we say? We say where I go, um, uh, resentments are the poisons I feed myself to kill others. Everybody does what the best they can do. That's right. But the one thing Mostly. I will say is if you have an opportunity to show up for somebody, show up for them. Because what it means on this side when you're going through that stuff, you know, the people that actually made the phone call this morning, were checking in on me, were keep staying close. My love, you know, all of that uh, makes the difference between getting through something with terror and getting through with a little less. So, um, and, and before we go to, back to Carlos, I just want to give a shout out to the people that make this possible. I want to thank Crystal Husband 
and Ron Frederick so much for stepping in today yes. and so graciously being here with us. And you guys will will incorporate you into the show soon. And um, Pete George, you know, you're traveling around, being a comedian, doing what you do. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here when you're here. And I'm grateful to have Ron and Crystal here in your absence. And my hairdresser, Nicole Venables of the Ruby Begonia Salon, who is phenomenal, and I love, 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 and I have to come see you because, look, I have such roots happening, and she has this, these great products. Usually I have her fuck-off hairspray, but somebody liked it so much they took it. Good. But um, she has great products um, uh, from the Ruby Begonia Salon, and she gave me this Argan uh, oil spray. Do you, do you um, do Argan yeah, Egyptian oil. Crystal doesn't want to make a sound. She's like, you're allowed That's to make first. You're allowed to make a sound. I already stripped my clothes. No, I made I made her take her shoes and her jewelry off. And then also Anson Williams. <laughs> Anson Williams. That. Anson Williams, who I well because the shoes were clomping on the floor and then the bracelets make noise. And she she's a very vivacious woman who has a lot going on. So as she moves, things move with her. So um, so we quieted it down for the show. Anson Williams, alert drops. Okay, this is this is a great product, Carlos. Are you ever like on the road, like late at night, driving from a gig? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if you're tired, yeah. you do a couple of shots of this, which is all natural. It's just like uh, orange rind, lemon rinds. Oh, really? And it wakes you up. Okay. And it saves lives, and it's fantastic. His uncle is um, uh, Heimlich, and no they invented way. it together. Yeah. The Heimlich. <laughs> that was worth me just showing up. To right? This right now. That's crazy. He's almost no. a thing like that. And then Rick Smokey. Okay, so if you ever need anything printed, like liner notes for your CDs yes. or anything like that, Rick will do. He never has or charged an artist. I need new business cards. He's never charged an artist. He is the saint, the salt of the earth. He's the one that does the, the thing for the veterans. No way. Rick Smokey, quick impressions in Chicago, made my tissue boxes, my cards, my bookmarks. He's like an amazing person. And quick impressions of Chicago. So tell him that I sent you, and he's going to take care of you anyway. But he'll take better care of you. Okay, now I like spent like the whole ninety gazillion not minutes talking true. about my thing. Have you ever had a health scare? Uh, not, not luckily, not myself uh, direct. Well, I, no, that's not true. I, I peed blood once. Ooh, that wasn't fun. But it was. Uh, had you eaten beets the day before? No, oh. that although that does have that an effect has... on me because there's an enzyme, right? Some yep. people don't have that. No, I was a silly young man and, and ended up going to Oktoberfest in Germany and, and just drank too much beer and not enough water. And I got infected. Wait a minute, that really? Yeah, I got I dehydrated. Never that I shrank my left kidney, I think. Something. No, I mean, wow. I'm, I'm of course exaggerating. Yeah. Um, but no, I've never had a gynecologist call me at 10 a.m. <laughs> that's not happened. So that's. There's a lot to be grateful. This is the month of gratitude, although. It, Every month should be, but uh, Every, that's one thing I'm certainly grateful for. No, well, we've been healthy, and the family's healthy, you know. And you have a beautiful... She's healthy, too. Little girl. How yeah. old is she? Two and a half. All right, that's crazy. I know, 2.5. Save her every second. It's it goes so, great. so fast, and it kills me that my kids are out of the house. So, yeah. Yeah, the kids are the greatest thing there yeah, is. They are. Okay, so, uh, so let's talk about you as a kid. So really? where were you a kid? Uh, New Jersey, North Jersey, a suburb of New York City. Um, yeah. I'm a New Yorker. So, no. and did you? Okay, so how did this? What was the first thing you wanted to be when you grew up? A beetle. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> yeah. Did you think you had a chance? No. No. Well, I don't know. I was three and a half. I didn't. I, you know, I didn't get too. You know, I didn't wrap my brain fully around. I gotcha. The, it didn't get that conceptual. So when they when you saw you saw the money at Sullivan. No, I oh. heard. The songs. I was a okay. three and a half year old kid, and I and I, I had to learn younger. how to play play it. So, so that that's what inspired you. So, yeah. did, was it was it John or George? Who who was your your both? Beatles? It okay. was uh, the the first two songs um, were "Let It Be." Okay. And, oh, so you're so young. And I love her. <gasps> yeah. Right. No, you're yeah. allowed to make noises, so, Ron. Right. You're allowed to speak. But and now I have to say, things. I'm a George guy. I, I'm a George. I was always a George. George is just unbelievable. Yeah. I heard so, you are so my while well, my guitar jamming. Yeah. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah. It's just such a I love playing it too. Well, maybe we'll have to have a tip. Well, we yeah. might have to have some taste of some covers. We we just might have to do that. So, okay, so so you wanted to be so you wanted to play guitar right from the start. Yeah, I just got complete I don't have any memories. 
before playing guitar. Really? So, yeah, I know. How how old were you? Three and a half. No. Yeah. I know. How did you do so, that? Uh, I had we well, at the time. It's uh, I don't want to make it too long a story, but I no, was, my father is, is from this Spain. Is, right? This is your me. show. I took over your <laughs> show. This is your show. <laughs> You're crazy. We want to hear your story. Uh, my father's from Spain. He mm-hmm. had an aunt that was ill. My mom decided to go take care of her for a year. Oh. Uh, I was when you were baby. yeah. So we went and lived there for a year. She had a couple of her brothers visit. They knew a couple chords and so I just there's nothing that much else to do and so I was it kind of so it's Castilian them. like guitar like flamenco this guitar was like a nylon thing? guitar yeah mm-hmm. yeah exactly like a Spanish guitar and uh but I but I that's where it was I guess it was 69 70 and I was hearing those songs and so actually Even nylon strings easier for a little kid but I mean thr- the well, thing had to be bigger than you it, it was it was big I, I should I, I should have you have a picture, picture. Yeah, oh it's so great um, but uh, yeah, recordings. They have recordings of me playing oh. stuff. They were so did they, so they talk so she showed me a couple chords and showed me how to play like you know like you know that kind so of thing. So you were playing Beatles, right? Yeah, right. Beatles was the first thing. Okay, so but Dad was Spanish, right? So okay. he's like, you want to learn to play guitar? If you're serious about this, you have to play a Spanish guitar. And that's why I said suburb of New York City because um, he found he was somehow very uh, locked into the flamenco scene in what New did York your, City. What did your father do? Uh, my father was a one hundred percent working guy. He worked on the on the docks of New so, York City. So he was not a creative. He, no, but he was. He loved music and he, he worked for tugboat companies. He was look. He pretty. Uh, okay. Pretty amazing working dude. Yeah, I love that. And yeah. and but. But he, you, there was music in the house. Always, always music and musicians. Oh, yeah. How like playing? Yeah, sure. Like oh. we'd like he'd have parties and he'd invite friends and like uh, yeah, pretty pretty incredible to be around. And we had also a next door neighbor. You might not know this name, but any of your guitar nerds out there, guitar nerds. Yes. Uh, there's a the, our next door neighbor uh, was this family uh, named the Demiolas, and Al Demiola is is a. Is epically Crystal famous. Said, you don't have to quietly acknowledge. Yeah, you're allowed she, to make sounds. Did you sounds. hear the gas? Pardon my gas. You're, you're allowed to gas. gas. You're allowed to gas. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Aldi Miola was my next door neighbor. Okay. Oh, oh. So it's like... <laughs> Educate then, me because I don't know who he is. He's just this epically uh, gifted jazz guitar player, but but his type of jazz leans toward the very Spanish sounding stuff. Um. Latin influence, Spanish... Uh, Music and so when the flamenco guitar player friends of my father's would come over and then Al would come over like his party was really pretty incredible. It was wow, amazing! And your father New didn't Jersey. play. No. Okay, he just was. He cooked paella. He cooked. Wow. Ooh. Everybody okay. has a purpose. There it is. <laughs> that that works well. Yeah. And your mother was she mu- musical at all? Uh, not really. No. It's interesting where you got that from. Where did you get that from? Uh, I don't know. One of the people we think might be my father might have been a musician. <laughs> I don't know. That was a, I stole that joke from my brother-in-law. Uh, he loves uh, to say that. <laughs> so, so, um, so when do you know, when do they know that you've got talent? So, uh, fast forward a couple of years, seven mm-hmm. years old, like, okay, we're going to send you to this, uh, this guitar teacher is here, but you have to audition. Like, I had to audition for him. Wow. I had to already learn how to know how to read seven. music. Yeah. And wait. You knew how to read music at seven? Somehow I learned. Yeah. You taught yourself? Kind of, yeah. And um, so, and then wow. I stayed with him for, and he had for, for a nice chunk of that time, he had a studio in Carnegie Hall. So I'm this little kid walking into Carnegie Hall every Saturday. I know. It's crazy. And your father is making this happen, yes. which says a lot. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and now, is he doing that because you have aptitude, or is he doing that because he believes? Why is he doing that? Oh, if only we could ask him. Well, well, but, what Because he loves like, well, me, what, man. No, he, no. He, he, loves, yeah. he loves having music in the house. He loves seeing how much I love it, how I took to it, and I really was passionate about it. Were you singing already? No, no, no. Quite the opposite. And th- that would be decades later. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're studying in Carnegie Hall. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. It sounds weird. That's crazy. It is crazy. And... Does the teacher 
let you know that you have aptitude? Does he not realize? really. No. He's just awesome. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. it's difficult. I don't know if I have an objective point of view about that. Okay. Because I was in it. You know? Right. He's just like an amazing dude, right? Like, like one, I don't know why I'm telling this story, but one time he passed a kidney stone during one of our lessons, right? What? And he's just like You don't sipping, have to laugh silently. He's You're like sipping, like. sipping in his espresso. He's like, excuse me one second, please. No, stop. That's he's supposed just to be the, the most ma- painful thing is, in right? the world. And he leaves his wife and is like, I'm sorry, Juan de la Mata. What a cool name, right? Mm-hmm. I, check this out. I was at uh, Amoeba Records recently. We all, went, my wife and I, she she beats me to it. She always goes to the flamenco section. Wow. Rifling through, there he is. See one, one of his records. Wow. Yeah, really cool, right? Like, That's really cool. Yeah. So, and he passes a stone in, in, <laughs> like, in like the middle of the, it's supposed yeah. to be worse than and childbirth. He, he's just, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Penny <laughs> so, did, Penny, did Penny Barnett something? just said, I knew you would be fine. You are Vicki Abelson. Um, Whoa, <laughs> there it fun. is. Butch Patrick. Okay, um, yeah, from that, the Munsters. Yeah, no Butch, way. Butch, yes, Eddie, Eddie Munster. Munster. Eddie Munster is watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm nervous. <laughs> no. I was fine. No, yeah, Butch is like the that's best. That's so cool. Phil, hey, Phil. Who else would kill you? Uh, Anthony Coppola. Hi, um, Linda Liberty. I'm just saying hi to people. Rick, oh, nice. so Rick Smolke, the guy I told. Yeah. Rick, so Carlos needs business cards. Rick is going to make that happen for you. Thank you, Rick, in advance. You're amazing. Okay, so 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 you take these lessons. You go into school. Yeah. Are you a good student? Um, p- Possibly could have been a quintessential underachiever yeah uh, possibly but do you know you're going to be a musician when you grow yes. up yes you already know that. i mean i don't know but you know like i just never thought about anything else D- you never thought about anything else yeah. so do you finish school yeah oh yeah do you go to college went to music school went to the music school so when do <laughs> when do you start playing out how does that um, happen that's a good question. You know, in music school, you form bands, you know, and you get. What kind of bands were you doing? Just kind of like I, I had this like French, guy. like it was a very kind of international school. And, Where's uh, the music school? In Hollywood, it's called Musicians Institute. It's still there. I, I think it's a, might be. Yeah, it's still there. It's, okay. But at the time, this was in 1985. Oh, I'm not in the shot anymore. I'm getting it, told yes. I have to get in the shot. In uh, 1985, it was just people from all over the world coming to school, and I kind of collaborated with this French guy and wrote songs and they kind of had this Euro pop guitar vibe to it. I can't imagine you playing Me, Euro pop. Uh, I don't know if it's the Euro pop you're imagining. <laughs> okay. But I thought it was pretty cool at the time, but it turns out it wasn't. And the clubs were very, uh, the clubs were into Madame Wong's East. Madame Wong's, what, do you remember this? Remember no, because I'm in New York. Yes. I, I was in New remember York. Crystal there, knows. There was this place on Pico called Club 88 where okay. the, 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 the club owner could not resist taking in stray cats. And the smell of this club was, oh. you know, incredible. Oh. And so to, these are the storied, uh, <laughs> the storied history of a musician coming of age and Los Angeles. So what was so the first bands that you're in are you're playing French Euro pop? Uh, yeah, stuff like that, okay. and just not really figuring out what I wanted to do. And that, again, I wasn't even singing yet. But you had studied classical guitar. Correct. You knew how to play flamenco. Correct. Were you playing lead guitar? Yes. And you were already playing lead. Yeah. So you were the lead guitarist. Yes. Okay. And you're not singing. No. No. Okay. No. Um, are you writing songs? Hmm. Trying, but not successful. Okay. So, and are you making a living doing this? Mm, well, yeah, almost. Yeah. So um, uh, I did the thing. I got out of music school. I got a job at Guitar Center, as you as you think you have to do as a that right. That makes sense so, to me. But the cool thing about that is, you know, it's this, it's this giant chain. It's like a yeah Walmart or something. I don't know what to compare it to. It's just it's huge. Oh, right? yeah, it's like right. a Target, right? Yeah, a music yeah. store. Well, at this time, there was only one of them. Really? It was a mom and pop store still. On what? Sun- really? The one on Sunset Boulevard was the I only did not know that. one and the uh, the shenanigans. Wait, your friend Walt there. just said you're a good athlete, too. All right. Oh, well, yeah. Thanks, thanks Walt. Walt. I'm going to ask, I'm gonna yeah. ask about that next. Yeah. So so it's a mom and pop store? It was, yeah. And and I imagine that like every musician in the world stopped it. Did you yes. meet? Yeah. I mean... I pick up the phone and Eddie Van Halen is on. I was like, ah, what? 
<laughs> Stevie Wonder, what was that? Oh, you want to hear a great Stevie Wonder story? Yes. Uh, two, I'll give you two of them. Okay, Steve, oh, yeah. Stevie, Stevie, um, well, this new keyboard came out. Everyone's obsessed with it. We're a new piece of equipment, a new okay. technology, and everyone's right. just like, gotta have it, and there's not enough to go around. And he has this uh, salesman take him through it and show it to him. Not show it to him, exactly. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I'm so glad that wasn't me. I'm so glad I didn't. Uh, because that could have very easily have been me. So, uh, and Stevie asked him, hey, what what do you think? Uh, do you do you like this keyboard yourself? He's like, yeah, man, I love it. It's amazing. He's like, okay, I'll take two of them. One for me, one for you. So they bought them. Stop. Cool, right? What a great story right. that is. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Sweet. I know. Wouldn't it be fun to be able to do that? That's so cool. That's but, really cool. but there are a lot of people who can do it that don't. So it's the he, fact that he did, yes. right? Right. He's not one of those people, I think. That's Because he did the same. He was in at another time, and he overheard a, 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 like a 13-year-old kid with his Les Paul. Les Paul is a very uh, classic pricey. and pricey yeah. electric guitar. It's mm-hmm. class. Great. It's one of the great guitars. And, right. Uh, and mom, maybe a single mom, you know, sorry, I don't think it's going to work out this year. And he, uh, Stevie, overheard it. It turns out his hearing is pretty good. And see what I did there. <laughs> and uh, he had the guitar waiting for the family at the front desk, which is pretty pretty cool, right? That's amazing. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. Um, okay, That's why so I made it up. Maybe yeah. you would. No. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so so wait, so before we we go back to music, tell me music. about the athlete stuff. So, oh yeah, I just loved sports. Did too. you play? Yeah, baseball and soccer, predominantly. Yeah. Through school. Yeah. Did you ever entertain idea thoughts of being an athlete? Hmm. Maybe as a young person, but you know, every kid does, I guess, that likes sports. That I think likes so. Everything. Like, well, who was? What was your team? I didn't. Uh, oddly enough, I didn't really have one. Being in wow. New Jersey, you're either like a Mets fan or a Yankees fan, mm-hmm. and of course, the the Yankees had a great team in the mid '70s, and they were really fun. Reggie Jackson, he was my hero. Exactly. I saw that game live when he had three home runs on three pitches. Oh, oh I wasn't there for that game. No, I, I, well, I saw it on TV. Oh, okay. yeah, I wasn't yeah, there yeah. either. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I remember like tuning in as a kid. Hell yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that year, you know, they were fun to watch. But I don't know if I ever committed to being a Yankees. Okay. I'm a Dodgers fan, sorry. Ooh. Sorry, uh, sorry, East Coast. Okay. The Dodgers, right. although, right. you know. You're here now. I don't want to talk about them either. So. What brought you out here? Uh, yeah, music school and stayed. And I did have like a couple of these... Same two uncles kind of mm-hmm. lived in LA and helped one of them let me stay with him while I was in school and helped me out and and that was uh, Uncle Frank. Thanks, thanks for everything, and uh, that kind of helped me get going. And then at, once I was in uh, Guitar Center, mm-hmm. this guy was like, "Hey man, I'm uh, I'm leaving back to Chicago." But I had this handful of students, and some of them were like celebrity students. Ah, we're getting to see it. Where we're going. See I, I see. There? I see where we're going. <laughs> I like it. That and one it. of them was Dion Warwick's son, who apparently now is a huge producer, Damon. But uh, but he was like a little kid, and uh, so I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, Wait, you know, I'll how do did it. he know that you could teach? He didn't. Because that's a I different. That's a different thing. And by the way, if he thought that I could teach, he would be wrong. Because I, you know, because I could, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I, you ended up taking that very far well, so. after a few years. Yeah, you get, but I, but I liked it. I, I think okay, so how do you, st- how do you, Carlos? For those of you who don't know, I don't. I've been writing it anyway. Yeah. Has has become the teacher of insane people, which we'll talk about. <laughs> but how how you're at that first lesson that you're teaching? Yeah. How did you prepare for that? What did you do? I, I not 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 much. <laughs> no, and I don't really totally. I mean, that was so thirty her, plus years ago. And your first student is Dion Warwick's. Yeah, one of the very first ones. Yeah, and they were all like kind of kids, yeah. also from like Harvard Westlake Brentwood School. So it was kind of that little private Affluent, school. Affluent. Yeah. Kind of and six and and celebrity parents. Maybe yeah. So that was like one of the. I mean, yeah, this thing. Did is, anybody is, ever like bust you for being a fake? A, f- a fake what? Well, I teacher. mean, I mean, teacher. No, because, no, no, you were able no, no. to like. I, I, I did it. I got it, but yeah. I just, I just didn't. I know I wasn't as good at it as I would be later with more experience and a, and a sort of 
more of a plan. <laughs> did you do, okay? So did you develop an on-the-job training plan? I did. Is that how it worked? I did. It did. So what? I got paid for it. <laughs> so what might one of those early lessons have looked like? Uh, it would probably be like, hey, uh, what kind of music do you like? Do you know any chords? Let's level. Let's learn a couple chords on the guitar. Oh, you want to learn a riff on the guitar? That kind of thing. And okay. So it was you know heading kind of in the direction where it should. should okay. Be. Yeah. And so you start you're starting to make money as a as a t- as a guitar. Yeah, so I'm, I'm teaching privately and and I'm able to uh, sustain myself, keep myself alive doing that for for a while. And are you also doing gigs? Yes, but and, not very important ones. Okay. Yeah. But like so they were important to me. And so what where where are you playing out? Uh, so I guess the next major thing. Wow, this is so crazy. We're just doing like a the biography. Of we Buzz are Cal. this. This, well, this <laughs> so is your life, Carlos Calvo. It really Calvo. is. It really <laughs> is. This is what I've been trying to forget all this time. <laughs> um, no, the, I guess the next major, major thing is I had this. Uh, the student. The student. She went. Um, I taught her for several years, and she went away to college. Right, and you know was kind of close with the family mm-hmm. and um, she ended up getting a result not uh, not opposite to what you got oh. she ended up uh, having a lump on her shoulder and it was like Hodgkin's disease oh. and uh, so she came home and had surgery and started doing chemo and so we just started hanging out and she had written a couple songs in co- college and we kind of just started messing around. Hey, maybe we could tweak them. Let's record them. Let's, you know, do uh, this and that. And so we built this little duo. And that's that duo ended up getting a lot of traction. What was it called? It was called Emily and Carlos, yeah. And I just got an email. This is the 90s. Uh, early 90s. And I just got an email like yesterday. It's like, hey, man, I can't find those Emily and Carlos songs. Anyway, could you send me? You know, are you the Carlos from Emily and Carlos? Like, okay, can you play on? us a little? I said no. three songs. No. Oh yeah, I'll play. Yeah, you play, know what? play a little uh, Emily and Carlos. Okay, I'm, I'm horrible at lyrics, but okay. like this is a song we both we both decided to like read Catcher in the Rye and write write a song about. It. Wow. You know. Okay. So it was like it was kind of cool. <laughs> Catch me again. It had a cool chord. Is it for, like yeah, it. Right, and she was great. She was great to write with. Very talented. Uh-huh. And it was the first time, like we made this four song cassette. And this is in the nineties. Yeah. Okay. And this thing got everywhere. Like I actually had an experience driving, and someone in a jeep blew past us, blasting that cassette tape. That is one of those crazy things that well, they was Well, first of all, the fact that you're saying cassette tape. Cassette is like, tape. <laughs> Did I mention the nineties? <laughs> The right. 1890s, by the way, when yeah. I say the 90s. Back in the <laughs> old days, there but, were these yeah. little things that yeah. you would pop into a machine. Um, yeah. So, how long did you guys stay together? Um, a long time. It just, but you know, and that's how. And we how became, did the music get? How did did you guys promote it? Did you have somebody? We had it? people kept making copies of it and copies of it, and like, dude, you gotta hear this, like, I, you know, like, uh, yeah, people on the East Coast. Like you, you would play games. out? Did you yes. play out together? Yeah, we started. The first thing we ever did. Do you remember Highland Grounds? No, you weren't here. So Highland Grounds. Highland Grounds. Highland, Grounds. Yeah. Highland Avenue. Oh, Mike, no, what is it now? There was, it's it's uh, the Cat and Fiddle. Okay. You know where the Cat and Fiddle is right now? Uh-huh. Not the original, but where it is now on Highland Avenue. Because it moved. It got... Okay. Uh, um, so that used to be this coffee shop, but like that was really known for live music and and they they had an amazing open mic night, and so we started there and kind of just took off. And we used to play this place called Luna Park. We used to, we played the Troubadour, Castle wow. Blues, and that's how we ended up. Uh, we ended up with the same manager somehow, 
as uh, Bob Dylan. Uh, oh my God. Paul Simon and what? George Harrison. I'm beginning to see. What? And our little humble little band, yeah. So now I'm getting to so see the thread of you how know this opening. This could never work. <laughs> you can see how, how it's all going to explode later, but I don't want to give away the ending. Oh, I don't. Wow. <laughs> but you all know. <laughs> Hi, Pete's watching. Hi, Karen. Hi, Christina. Um, okay, so. Uh, this is one of my episode of Storytellers. Exactly. I, I, yes, I love. Yeah. Okay, so, so you end up with a manager. Yeah, and he's great. He's okay. brilliant. He's okay. great. And he just, uh, you know, we tried. And so what happened? I don't know. I just, I don't want to, you know, there was a... Uh, was it personal? Maybe. A little okay. bit. Because um, that yeah, can fuck I things think, up so I fast. I think we, we had maybe different concepts of work ethic. But again, I'm not here to... Yeah, I you gotcha. Know. Emily's awesome. She was great to work with. And that was a really wonderful project that apparently some people still remember. That is sweet. so fantastic. It is. And so, how long are you guys together? Maybe five years, oh, something like that, six years. But did you tour at all? Yeah, we did some play. We played like in, in uh, Colorado a little mm -hmm. bit. But also, we wrote a lot of songs. And so I practiced writing a lot of songs. I started, you know, by so that's when you got those singing. chops. Yes, yeah, got the songwriting chops. And I felt that, and with my friend Glenn Goss, who sadly just passed away. Hmm, sorry. He, amazing guy. And he was uh, from Philly. Mm -hmm. And he... Uh, hey, Al. Al Ash. Yeah. Oh, do we have Philly Al, girl. Alice, that's right. Water. Water. <laughs> W-O-O-T-E-R. <laughs> I'm going to have some water. I say water. I'm yeah, from New York, so New we York. say water and we say pizza. pizza. We had an E-R where an mm -hmm. A goes and an A where an E-R goes. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Jersey, so <laughs> just say fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's there, you go. Um, there you go. He's so, in, hi, Christina. He's in our tribe. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Walt? Mm -hmm. Tell him. There you go. Uh, so, um, so yeah, and this guy Glenn was with this. Uh, there was this band called the Hooters from Philly. Just the, I remember the Hooters. The Hooters sure. were, yeah, yeah. were epic, right? Yeah, All I'm you right. zombies. <laughs> Man, we dance like the wave of an ocean road. Right? So good. Yes. So my buddy Glenn grew up with um, the main singer and songwriter of that band. And, okay. and he's an amazing songwriter. We did this uh, project to, together called The Dead Poets. And we just got together and wrote t stacks of songs and just recorded them and just hold up. And it was great. Again, another very uh, formative uh, time, even though maybe nothing... Uh, came of that project. It's everything not is, true. Everything's yeah. moving forward. It, it was absolutely foundational, mm -hmm. and it um, informed everything that I feel or think that I know about writing music. You know, it, it was like just. Can you? Is there anything specifically you can point to just, that you learn from that? Yeah, just um. Well, he was a great lyricist, and he's really um. There's different styles. There's, there's a kind of more storytelling lyricist, and he was more stream of consciousness uh, lyricist, where you just kind of skim off, you know, the top layer of, of your subconscious and just pull things that are just sitting there. Is there a lyric? Paul Simon is like that. Huh? Paul Simon. Give there me were an incidents of and accidents and oh. but you know, like you know how his his songs have this kind of like almost wordplay meandering mm -hmm. in a cool way. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that's like stream classic stream conscious song. Right? Uh huh. Yeah, I know. When what have we learned today? So <laughs> so okay. So wait. So so you're playing. You're playing with Emily. So you're the, doing it with yeah, the manager. Yeah, these are the two big projects. So now, how does the how does the how does opening for Bob Dylan and Paul Simon happen? And when yeah, does that so, happen? Yeah. So oh, so there's this gig. He's like so the manager's like you know there's this gig at the. Uh, you know the famous Fillmore East, and there's a Fillmore West. I went to the Fillmore, Fillmore East. East. Believe it or not, there is a Fillmore in Denver. As Wait, well. what? I know. There's also this is this came later. I, I think after Bill Graham had passed, but because I was like fourteen when it closed. Beautiful, yeah, 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 sad. Beautiful auditorium, mm -hmm. and um, Paul Simon and Bob Dylan were about to go on tour together the following year. They when played the Hollywood this? Bowl. Like. I'm not good. Approximately. Probably 99. Okay. 2000. Okay. And he's like, oh, I want you guys to be the opening act. 
you know, I was like, whoa. So we did. It was great. What, what was that like? Um, I don't think I was smart enough to be as scared as I should have been. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And also... Did you have any interaction with them? Oh, uh, with Paul. Then, how, yeah. how so? Just, uh, he, you know, greeting. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Good. Hey, good to meet you. And all that. Okay. Nothing, nothing like... And Bob, no. Bob's you got nothing You don't to get to talk to Bob. You don't get yeah. to talk to Bob. No, you don't get to talk to Bob. <laughs> and that's kind of part of one of the millions of things I love about him. Yeah. You don't get to talk to Bob. What, one of my favorite... Well, my only story about Bob was uh, my friend Kenny Aronson was playing bass with him. I... I just play with Kenny. Stop it. So my buddy Glenn, we did. He put together this big. Uh, are you guys familiar with Beit Shuva? It's a, um, it's a rehab. Oh of, yes, I know a lot of people who got sober there. Of course, yeah. yeah. And my buddy Glenn did, and he ended up working there, became the musical director there. He put on this big show, Rock for Life. Yeah. The Hooters came. Kenny Aronson was the bass player. I was a guitar. I was a Hooter for that night. Oh my that's god! I okay, so I've been booking Kenny. Kenny's was playing for me back in '85, '86. Okay, that's crazy. I'm think I'm, I'm playing a gig in New York. I was thinking about hiring him. I talked I talked to him about him playing bass for me for that gig. Kenny's oh, Kenny is one of my favorite bass players in the world, and he's such a he, great dude. And he plays slap bass like nobody's been. Nobody yeah, plays slap bass. Plays he's in the Yardbirds. He's been playing yes, the Yardbirds he's been for years. The yard birds, yeah. For a, for a long time, but he was yes. playing with Dylan, and this was yes. back in the. 80s yeah and um he invited me to come to the studio because i dylan was my god to meet yeah. bob and so i was getting off the elevator and kenny stopped me and he said mm. go home yeah not today yeah you like, don't get he, to talk to bob like but well but no i could have but he didn't want the whole bubble to burst like yeah bob wasn't having a good day yeah, yeah, yeah. and it wouldn't have been good i would sure. have been sad so he i was sad and i got sent home yeah but so yeah yeah, yeah, that's, that's the that's, myth of Dylan. It's it's smart. I think <laughs> it's mythology. I think it's smart to to I keep the myth going. Kenny. That's so Kenny is dope. He's he's oh. just awesome. We had a great time. And back in the day, he wears a hat yep. these days. But back does. in the day, he had like the original pompadour. Wow. He had the most. His hair was like wow. this high. He's and in Atlanta he City these cool days. Dude. I think. Is he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't we'll know. Go, we'll, we'll track him down. Oh God, Kenny, coming for you, buddy. Um, ten, 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 one. Minutes. To what? Seven? No. One hour? No. No. Edit. Oh no. Cut it out. No, Ron. We so talk. Sorry. We talk. So no, sorry. it's. It, I thank you for being up. <laughs> well, we're Ron, only in the nineties. I am so grateful to Ron Frederick, who just yes. happened to hear I was t speaking at Women Who Write a, a couple of weeks ago and saying, "God, Pete's going on the road, yeah. and oh my God, you know, and Pretty I need people who will be willing and." Like Ron just stepped up and said, "If you ever need anybody, Crystal said I'm there." I mean, these are, this is the salt of it because nobody makes money doing this. No one here is making money doing this. We do this for the love of the art, right? That's right. Yeah, that's what we do it. And right. so, thank that's you right. so much for right. for doing this. And so, by the way, if anybody has any questions for Carlos, please um, put them on the thread, and then Ron and Crystal are going to let us know and if I'll, you've got I'll questions. And make something up. And, and we're going to make something up. And if not, like we'll pretend that there are questions. Right. No. I, I think people are are, 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 are just so sh stunned listening to your brilliance that they You're can't so even funny. think to type right yes, now. So okay, right. so um, okay, so so you played with Emily, yeah. and what happens and, next? And, and uh, wait, have you then, then I decided to try to do my own thing? Are you teaching mega superstar little guy who uh, becomes mega yeah, famous? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so yeah, Adam Levine. Okay, so have, what's that about? I get a call from a mom, uh, from a mom who's got a ten-year-old kid. Ten. Yeah. Adam Levine, Maroon Five yeah. at ten. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and uh, although you know, yeah, let's drop some names, I guess. Right? Yeah, let's drop so, yeah, some no, names. Yeah, so they're great. I love uh, the family. Uh, Adam's mom's name is Patsy, and she's wonderful. Could, and could Adam actually, play at all then? No, no, no. It's his first lesson ever in his life. You know. Taught him from now. You're I was a little better here. at this at that point. Okay, so how long have you been teaching at this point? Eight to ten years. Oh, so you yeah. you've got teaching chops now. Yeah, it's getting there. It's okay. getting better. You got game. Years. Yeah, I still look like a maniac, but but uh, <laughs> but uh, and uh, and I ended up meeting one of my best friends there because Adam had like a, a like a British au pair, like a nanny. Yeah. She was great. She became a friend of mine. Uh, still is to this day. Nice. And um. And her sister was also doing the same line of work and married a guy. And anyway, he's 
he's one of my best friends. Is that we went to an engagement party and met. I don't know. That's that's uh, no, like tens- this- that's parenthetical. I, but I, I can't like this idea. think about that period of my life. But here's something interesting. I don't know. I don't know you probably know this, but um, uh, Adam's dad. I know nothing. Is uh, his best friend since he was 15 is uh, Jonah Hill's dad. Right. Okay, that's a little. I wasn't expecting Who's that. Jonah Feldstein, actually. Um, and 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 what's it? Beanie. His Beanie. His sister Beanie. I remember when Beanie was born. So my kids love she, Beanie's amazing. Beanie, she's a Broadway. Yeah, yeah. She's, she does. She does it all. Right? With Ben Platt, she's yeah. best friends with I think mm-hmm. Ben Platt, right? Wow, yeah. So um, yeah, so they're fr- and um, Jonah's and Jonah's dad was a businessman a big business manager rock and roll like Siegel and Feldstein I think was the name of the the firm they were uh-huh. for Guns N' Roses oh like, wow not, like very big wow and uh, and I ta- I also taught Jonah and his older brother Jordy who would go on to manage uh, Maroon 5 oh wow and they were, I, I heard that they were neighbor right the, yeah, the yeah they all lived in Russia. Chevy Hills uh, Chevy Hills, Beverly Wood, right there. And know. they were like kids together. They grew up together. They, they, grew grew, up together. they were they were really really close friends. Apparently, still are. And and the fact that they're still I, I have to yeah. give a shout out to Adam Levine, who by the way I miss on the Voice very much. But the fact that he never stepped out and took himself because he could have taken himself out and had the solo career and left Maroon Five a long time oh, ago. Oh yeah, definitely. He was encouraged to do so many times. I understand. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and the every fact day, that, probably. Right. And yeah. the fact that he is. That they are still Maroon yes. Five, I respect that very much. Definitely, and I will say this: just you know, when I would see him on The Voice from time to time, right. he's really acting exactly like himself. As well, I, I, I've heard he's kind of a character. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you can see he's kind of a character, yeah. a little yeah. full of himself, but well, he deserves. Again, he, we had a little conversation. How could you not be at some point, right? When certain things happen and you become a globally recognized name and face. There's no way you could be stay the same. Stay the same. Yeah. Although, that's why I've been avoiding it. <laughs> that's because. Uh, Although, all right, I have to We've say, gotten to the core of who Carlos Calvo is. Now. I have to say the one exception to that rule that I can think of without even taking a pause is Tom Hanks. Um, from yeah. everything I know, and I just want to say that I just yeah. uh, two hours ago got an invitation to a screening of. Uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and Tom's going to be there. And my lifelong dream to be to breathe his wow. air, I'm going to get to do on Saturday, and I'm out of my mind crazy excited that's, because that's he's somebody awesome. that did not. He that does seem. Everybody to says, yeah, that shit's not guy. happened to him yeah. at all. Yeah, like ever. Yeah. Okay, so but let's get back to Adam. So he's ten yeah. years old. Yeah. So uh, and and by the way, Jonah was a, is a really solid musician too. Is he really? And he wrote this song when he was eleven called "Mr. Spaceman." That was just hey, fucking Mr. hilarious. Hey, Mr. Spaceman. No, not it, was, that one. it was more like uh, I was talking about like you know his dirty parts and stuff like. I could, you know, I have a like a pornographic memory of, for music. Right. Pornograph- pornographic. <laughs> All right, now that's a Freudian slip I can get behind. No, right. so I, for some reason, I like I have my own lyrics in front of me because I can't remember anything. But music, I can remember every single thing. All right, I think the hard drive. So you'd be like, it was kind of nirvanish. Mr. Space, is that your supersonic underwear? Is your space module later under there? <laughs> the movie gonna conquer Earth again. You know, wow. he wrote this, it was a, such a, we took him into my buddy Glenn's studio to record it. I wish I still had it. How, how, Joan is like 10, 11. Old. he's yeah. 11. Yeah. And he stops playing? Well, he's really funny. Like, he's the, he's the funniest kid. You know, kids can be precocious and right. kind of clever. But yeah. No, he was really funny. Now is he part? Is he playing with Adam? No, no, no. But they both went. They also both, I think, ended up at Brentwood School, and and so Adam had a band, and they got signed right. Okay, out now Adam's band. School. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. No His band right then is that Maroon Five? No. Oh. <laughs> no, I like yeah, yeah. that. Although okay. some of the guys are. Okay. I think they're, they're the same guys. Their first band was called Cara's Flappers. Called what? Kara, the name uh, is K A R A, Kara's Flowers. Okay. And they were kind of like Beatles meets Green Day. Oh, wow. I know. Now, is Adam, and they were great. Is Adam playing? What's, is he playing? Guitar and singing. He, I know he's singing. 
No, he's playing. He's a, he's a very, he's a really accomplished guitar player. I, I've seen that. Yeah, but, and it always amazes me because yeah. I don't expect him to be like on Howard Stern, him playing like Purple Rain solo. I, I saw him right, do that. Right, right. And this is all because Carlos Calvo no, was his teacher. No, I no, but uh, it's because well, he he played. has aptitude. He really did, yeah, yeah. No, he really did. Like he was really uh, had tunnel vision with music as well. Was he like one of those students that like did the homework and stuff? He just no. He just He's didn't put the good. He just. That's all he wanted to do. Just, just play. You know, just had his like gooey preteen hands on those strings nonstop. You know, how, just... how, how long did you teach him? Uh, okay, so he graduated high school. He got th that band. Wait, wait. Got he's ten when you start. Yes. So all through school. Wow. Yeah. And um. And are they we playing out and doing gigs? No, now they're getting yes, and now and, for, and we were all playing at this place called the Alligator Lounge. Does anyone remember? Crystal, that? do you remember the Alligator Lounge? There's there's a place on Pico near where the freeway, like Pico and Thirty Fourth, where the Ten Freeway crosses. A place called Upper West. Is that the name of this restaurant? Well, that place used to be. A dumb, we're going back to the nineties, folks. This is good. That's not that. It was old. great, and there was a lot of great bands used to play there. Uh -huh. His band uh, and like Rooney. Um, uh, Phantom Planet, you know, uh, remember that? California, California, here we come, right back where we started from. The theme song to the OC, come on. Okay, yeah. yeah I didn't watch it either. A New didn't Yorker watch it didn't watch soaps, I don't know. <laughs> no, it wasn't a soap, was it a soap? O the OC, that was like kind of nighttime soap, kind of. Thing, yeah, it was I like think. young, kind yeah. of. I'm old, I didn't watch yeah. young. Yeah. It was I like Beverly Hills 902. It was like that. It was like 902 okay. as but yeah, the orange yeah. kind of kids. Okay. So uh, all these cool bands and scenes, they're playing there. And they, they get signed to Warner Brothers, same label as Green Day. They're kind of the same producer as Green Day. Wow. And they make this record, and it's very exciting. And it tanks. Completely. Uh, label. And have they, they've written, Adam's writing the songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the band. It's a band, yeah. but he's writing the songs. And it's not all the guys from Ruin 5. It is most of the band. The, the original bass player and the other guitar player, keyboardist. Uh, okay. Nikki and, and uh, Jesse Carmichael, yeah. So, uh, I, anyway, so they, they, they get dropped from their label. And then, like, they're, Adam and Jesse are sharing an apartment. On like Santa Monica and Sentinella in West LA. This is kind of, you know, not very glamorous two bedroom apartment. And he has, hey man, you know, we're in between kind of ideas. You want to work together? So we, we, we started working together again in between. And then they put together Maroon 5. And I think we all know what happened. Wait a minute. We started working together? Yeah, the, he, he reached out to me and said, hey, I want to do, let's do some more guitar stuff. I want to keep going. I want to keep studying. So he kept studying. So yeah. he kept wanting to better himself. Even after his first uh, record deal. Which is really cool. Wow. That's that says a lot about him, I guess. It does say a lot about him. Yeah. But that, I think, is a hallmark of many successful people. The, the kind of relentless pursuit of... So, um, and Maroon 5 hits, like, immediately. Yeah, I mean, just, it's like, big. immediately. It's pretty big, yeah. And have you seen him since he Yeah, did? yeah, yeah. We've chatted and hung out and we've talked and we texted. Like, one of his very, very best friends I was also teaching. And they're still very, very good friends. And so... Uh, my friend lives, his friend, who's a st also a student of mine, Charlie, lives in Chicago. And so we were in Chicago once and we're just ringing Adam up and said, dude, I'm here with Carlos. Like, don't worry, I know. You know, that whole thing. I'm sure he's very nostalgic about he it. Is, I, mean, uh, he was I understand there time. is a Maroon 5, like, like um, video of the life of Maroon 5. And apparently I'm in it. I don't know. But I haven't seen it. Somebody love, told me. I love that. But he's still lovely with you. If, if oh, he's you. wonderful. He's he, he has to be very grateful to you. Um, He's really gracious about it. There's no he, doubt. There's no yeah, doubt, and right? he studied with you a long time. Long time, time yeah. And yeah. so you get very close, you know, mm -hmm. when, when that sort of thing happens, you know, exchanging. So you're not have, having, like, milk and cookies and, like, doing a little lesson and yeah. that kind of thing? That sounds Ten years right. old? That sounds right. That sounds right. <laughs> this is just too crazy. Yeah. All right, so, and, and so, okay, so is he your first student that, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I've had like students in bands, or like you know that same time that Graham Nash's son was that also nice. was a, like the Brentwood School was crazy at that time. Like I remember when Adam was maybe fifteen or something. He he's like, hey, we're doing the big fundraiser for the school. It's gonna be live music. I, I want to have you as a guest, right? So 
the thing is at the Palladium, not at the school. Of course. And um, there's three three uh, musical acts playing. The first one was, was the late uh, Nicolette Larson, who was oh, awesome, right? Yeah. Epic, right? Yes. Oh, great. Then Kenny Loggins comes out, right? Oh. This is a high school. <laughs> and then Crosby, Stills, and Nash <laughs> fucking come out. And like, I'm like, what the? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was That's like, yeah, that was, that, thanks, thanks for you. Like, it's great. You know, he knew it was going to be cool, and he knew I would enjoy it, which is, which is sweet. Wow, that is sweet. Okay, yeah. so so who else's kids are you teaching? Now? Well, or like, uh, you know, one one can I really like, I didn't get to work with him as long as I would have liked because he moved to the East Coast, but there's a band, the band Aerosmith, uh, the guitar player Joe Perry. Oh, is just the little band called yeah. Aerosmith and the little Joe Perry song. Well, you know, I know. <laughs> What's that? Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah he's a really, uh, he's really good. Uh, Is he? Guitar, guitar player, and and and, but really, he credits his grandfather Nick, who is a jazz clarinetist. Wow. His mother said to me, I know it's so interesting. This, well, who uh, other, well, who other kids? Right? What other kids were you I don't teaching? Know. Don't I really. Yeah, come on, drop some names. Like, drop some names. We're gonna get you some students. We're yeah, get you but students. I mean. Just, Man, it's hard, you know, again, I don't, it's a haze of, okay. of awesomeness. But yeah, a lot, a lot of things like that, like Neil Diamond's kid, well, like, I, I spent Thanksgiving at Neil Diamond's house once. Okay, so what was that? What? <laughs> the jazz singer. So what is that like? Um, well, uh, tense. How come? Because he was getting divorced. Oh. I yeah. actually think I saw the girl that he then... Yeah. He married the, the younger. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh huh. I think so. Uh, but he couldn't have been nicer and more graceful. And he handed me like I have like his live double, like box set, and, and it's the one he literally and he's like, he got want you to have this. And That's pretty sweet. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. He was really nice. Really nice too. Really chill. So how does it turn out? Because you then start working on sets. And yes. teaching actors how to play guitar. Yeah, coaching did, for teaching. How did that start? So, uh, I think one music supervisor just like was looking for someone, and and um, you know, the fact that I've been able to sustain myself as a working musician is, is has so much to do with fortunate circumstances. And somebody just dropped my name and said, "Hey, you know this guy's great. You should call him up." And this music supervisor. Is great, and he. Um, Who was he looking for a teacher for? Oh, what was the first one, man? Oh, actually, the first one was an indie movie I did mm -hmm. where I had to teach this girl classical guitar. But like, but Bud, Bud Carr. Usually... Bud Carr is a great. He's a, a legendary music supervisor, and he brought me in on like um, things like uh, I did uh, Get On Up, James Brown biopic. I, I coached. You know, he he brought me in the Californication. Okay, which starts the David Duchovny thing. Right. So you're dying to get to this. But, okay, but my <laughs> look, at, before, look how satisfied she looks. Oh, <laughs> I need a cigarette. Right. But before we get to, to David, yeah. you've done up you've done other a bunch of these things. I got I remember one call I got and this guy is like, um, it's okay, uh, very big client. We need you to teach him for very he's big, you know, it's like he's not telling, but he's not telling. He's like, Hey man, you know, that's cool, but I've done this, but you're gonna have to let me know who it who is and what. It turns out to be Tom Cruise for Rock of Ages. Right? So they call me and they. Uh, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Okay, I, I, I can't. Don't make me okay, do this. so yeah, do this. Okay, so what is that like? I don't know because there was a thing. I think I got kind of background checked, maybe, and I think they were hoping for someone in the circle, if you know what I mean. Scientology. Yeah. I wonder who they found. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't get the time. And, you didn't, didn't yeah, get the Tom Cruise gig. Did not get the time. I, okay. I was high. I was literally like, okay, you're set. We're you're starting. How, what Monday. year is what, what time frame is this? I don't know. When was like, I'm bad. 1990s. No, 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 this is already the 2000s. Okay. Well, the Rock of Ages. It was, a, I, it was a Broadway musical, yeah, and he, I, he did the movie. I saw that. I didn't even remember Tom was in that movie. Okay. Well, that's that's how good that guitar I do, was. I actually, I, I, I take that back. I do remember, and Tom actually did a very good job. He, he did a he very did. good job in that. You know who I really enjoyed uh, coaching? Um, David Oyelowo. He played uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in Selma. You know, 
Wow. That movie. Yeah. Okay. And he's he's brilliant. He's a British actor, actually. Uh-huh. And we did this um, chess records movie called Who Do You Love? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bud Carr was once the... You know that, Ron? Yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, um, the same movie was a movie with a very similar storyline was coming out and Beyonce was playing... Uh, oh. What, what, what is... Uh, why is my brain doing this right now that I can't remember? Um, the, the... Come on, help me. Come on, Crystal. Who's you're a music playing? person. I don't know what movie you're talking amazing about. The amazing female crooner. Uh, it'll come oh, back to me. Oh, uh, uh, dream, not Dream Girl. No. No. No, 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 no. What? What? Now, no, it'll come back to me. I all can't right. do it right okay. now. Okay, all right. I'm going to surprise you with it. All right, no. I so, all those characters, you know, so he was playing a young B.B. King, and I had to coach him on like early, like 1955, not B.B. King, uh, Muddy Waters, who's uh-huh. absolutely one of my heroes. Heroes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he would, actors are really hardworking people. And yeah. they, they're gonna, they're not gonna stop till they feel like they got it right. Aww. That's one thing I do admire about them after having worked in that world for a while is just how hard they work. They're really uh, dedicated to getting it right. How, is, as, so the difference a, between teaching kids who are ten to eighteen yeah. years old and going on a set and teaching an actor. Yeah. The 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 thing is with a kid, you have time, you know. With the actor, like, well, this scene shoots in two and a half weeks. I was going to say, so how much time do you usually get to teach an actor to... Sometimes a month, sometimes a week. Something like that. I could go. And really how fast. successful can they be learning to do it in, like, a week? So that that will inform us on how we're going to go about doing it. You know, if there's time, we're really going to get into more detail. What did you think of um, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rami Malek, what he did? Did you, did well, you he was, see? Well, he was, his performance was. I mean, he didn't, he didn't play. Amazing. He didn't play piano at all before right. he did that. Right, right. None of those he guys definitely played. Did coaching, yeah. Well, they, one guy. Brian May, I think, coached the guitar player himself. I thought that was Brian May. I was I mean, like, was how is this right. happening? And he played incredible. Yeah. One guy, the. the Bass player, I think, actually is a player. Mm-hmm. But the drummer, right. drummer who played Roger Taylor was not a drummer either. Yeah, they all had to. They be were amazing. Of course, the budget on that film, yeah, is is not small, and so they probably st- started doing that with like a year. Work. They probably started pretty early because it's yeah. important. Yes, it's not like some guy playing, you know, for two busking seconds. for two seconds. This is Queen. Yeah, and everyone knows what Queen looks like playing live. You know, I, I thought they did that. Really they great. crushed it. They're amazing. Amazing. Um, you know. Okay, so did did you coach anybody who couldn't get it? I mean, you don't have to name a name. You mean for film or yeah. TV? That's a good question. Not really. I mean, like, because it depends what you mean by get it. Like, there are degrees, and, like, you get as close as you can get. So know? if they can't really, like, really play, then yeah, they're but you just going to manage it. And, you, and, and it, it could really map out where the notes are and they get you know they get really close did good. anybody blow your mind and like just like do incredible in a really short time well uh, i think dave oh yellow like are, are the musical soup the musical director for that film is kev mo that's a pretty serious wow. name okay blues, so right? wait what what film is this who do you love this is the chess okay. records uh you know so all those amazing artists that came Came up, Chuck Berry, I think, originally was on chess. And so you're team. coaching the guy who's going to be Muddy Waters. Muddy Waters. And he he actually starts feeling that Kev Mo is not being authentic enough, which I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> no, don't do this. <laughs> and but he gets so deep into it, and he has his points. He's like, no, he actually did it like this. He's like, well, but yeah, but with this movie, you know, we don't have to be so. Uh, he said, no, we have to do it. And there, were, there was some tension with them in a way, you know? Wow. Which I admired. I admired both of their stances, not to be overly diplomatic, but look, the guy, Kev Mo, has to keep things moving along, you know? Right. We got to go. We got we to film it. But uh, Oyelowo was so focused on getting it, just Perfect. like Muddy. Wow. Which is, which, and early Muddy is not, um, not as hurt, listened to as... The stuff you know, um, yeah. Play some. You got that kind of match, oh, boy. Man. When I was, I, I, I'm not gonna. Play. I love this riff. This is the my. This is. Is that swampy? And no matter how many times I play that riff, I don't think I play it 
authentic way. Like, oh. it's so dirty and nasty and catfish blues. Mm. Really, really What were you going to say, Ron? Well, I'm, yeah. were the actors that you taught, were they actually playing live in the film? Or they were like guitar lip syncing? No, they were, they were playing to playback, but lip, yeah, sync, but trying to sync it as perfectly oh, yeah. as possible. And what kind of music are you... Okay, so this is going on in the yeah. early 2000s. What kind of music are you doing at this time? What's Carlos Calvo doing at this time? Carlos Calvo is doing a singer-songwriter thing. And so I can you play us something that you were doing back then? Yeah, this is... Um, we, this we, is we, another, gotta, we gotta look at the No, lyrics. I don't. I don't. Okay. This, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is another song that comes out of uh, sheer desperation and emotional... It's an emotional dystopic... Uh, Diddy. So you're writing what's happening for you at the time? Kind of, or yeah, are you digging yeah. into deeper? Are you making shit up or are you living it? All of the above. Okay. What's this called? This is Wrecking Ball. So there's been some tunes song. named, yeah, I named Wrecking Ball, but I. I no, I know your song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the first ones that kind of hit for me in a way. Like I was like, oh, this is actually a pretty good song. Um, and you do this alone? You write this alone? Yeah. Okay. Who are you playing with with this? Just me. Okay. Solo. Okay. Yeah, and so I'll just give you a verse for us. Yes. I got a stone inside my head. It's blowing out things that you've said. The second I thought, life of a grid. But on to the next, so that you. Cyrus's record before ball. Miley's, maybe before Springsteen's. Wow. But maybe just after Emmy Lou Harris's. Okay. Maybe. But not influenced by that. No. No. no it just seemed it's yeah. a pretty good metaphor. It is. And you know? Walt says that's one of his favorites of Walt, yours. I'm so glad you're hanging out with yeah, us. Buddy. Walt, <laughs> this Walt's is awesome. So, Thanks, Walt's Walt. sticking in. He know and he, he knows and by the way, so how do you know Walt? Uh, grew up together, uh, same hometown. Is he a and Walt no, but Walt actually you know what, I had a uh, I did a for my last record did a crowd sourcing uh, what what do you call it the crowdfunding uh, what is it called thing what right is, what is Go that GoFundMe yeah yeah, 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 yeah I, did, I, like I didn't use GoFundMe but I did it independent and, and I, I have to say Walt contributed generously and sweet Walt very great. so that you know people like Walt helped make that record possible which which makes me super that's, happy that's really sweet it's homegrown yeah yeah that's yeah. really excellent from the people for the people. For from the people for the people. That's what I'm saying. So okay, so so you're having this. So now this is turning into a career, right? And then uh, yes, and so, and I start working with some other uh, artists, kind of collab like uh, our friend Cindy Alexander. Yeah. Shout out to Cindy, like who we have a mutual friend. That was a friend. crazy story after we met. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll get. Yeah. We'll, we might have to tell that story. And uh, Cindy's a great singer and songwriter. You know, veteran. Uh, singer songwriter and mm -hmm. she um, we she approaches me first maybe for some guitar lessons she mm -hmm. wants to brush up on guitar and then mm -hmm. she's doing some tours and we start touring together um, and are you playing with her or are you doing your own thing yes both yes okay. so I opened the show and then okay. I stay stay on stage I still do stuff like that and I saw you do that at, at the hotel cafe yeah yeah, okay. yeah. Maureen artist working yes. show come on you are I don't get off the stage I'm no I'm just going to stay on the yeah, yeah. play another set watch this <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, so we were like start touring like Germany a bunch and stuff nice. like that they did. it's a great place to tour for an American or British songwriter they love English 
spoken songs. And so okay, so as a matter of fact, I'm going to give a plug because uh, December 17th in the living room, um, Sarah Nimitz and Snuffy Walden are going to be here, and they tour Germany and yes. do. You know, German audiences love. They do. Yes. They do, and that, and that's the first. Uh, that was a really learning experience. That was the first time. I mean, Cindy, we would have a good laugh about this. Um, we learned how to play grinder sets, you know? What's a grinder set? <laughs> Gr- gr- <laughs> Crystal's laughing. Grinder set is like, uh, you Sex know, stuff? three and a half hours. Oh! No. Four, you know, the, you're <laughs> like grinding. Oh. Wow. Like, like, I, like, I'm a little, I'm a little hoarse today because I had, a, I played a grinder set last night, so. Where'd you do it? I, I at the Jack Daniels uh, event. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about what you're doing with the Jack Daniels. Uh, that's people. really, I'm really excited about it. Uh, well, first it, it started, um, which used to be my my drink of choice before I got sober. It, right, and that's <laughs> that's a good way to go. Both on uh, both counts. Although the last thing I drank was a glass of Manischewitz at a seder, which is oh. so sad that that was the last cocktail that I, it's just wrong, wrong, wrong. I think we have to end this. Can't can you <laughs> call it a cocktail? It's so no. sad. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I'm, I actually have always been a fan of the Jack Daniels. My friends uh, will attest to that. But um, yeah, I started, uh, they, they have a, a private space that they use for, mm-hmm. for private events in mm-hmm. LA. Mm-hmm. And um, they needed some live music. And my so like what, what kind of, of, like what kind of stuff is, ha- what, what kind of events are Jack Daniels thrown? Like? Okay, so some of the things that I work on is a uh-huh. thing called the rock and whiskey dinner, or rock and roll dinner, okay. where they invite certain clients, like maybe Kroger or certain like trendy bartenders to try to encourage them to use their, their uh, product and their uh-huh. new, in like the new mixology thing. And, and so they have, or like we did one recently at the Grammy Museum. People oh, nice. came. Yeah, uh-huh. it's a lot of really cool, they have great clients. Uh-huh. And they come in and they do a whole tasting. Uh, and they talk you Wait, through. Wait, there are more than there are? Yes, there, there, is, there is the old. The Jack numbers, Black the was cla- mine. Number seven. That's yeah. Cool, right? And there was Jack Red. Well, uh, Jack, no, that, there's a rye. There is a single barrel. Okay. There is a gentleman Jack, which is Ooh, a very smooth kind of entry. Good. Yeah. See that that one drinks very smooth. very smooth. And then there's the Sinatra now, which is a really cool cool one. And wow. Old, and I might that have was to done. go out. And, no, please don't. <laughs> no, I won't. Why don't? Yeah, I'll just describe. Okay. Yeah. Just describe. And, uh, and uh, so so they talk me through through. So they have a live band, and I'm the house band. For this, for these nice. events, which is really cool, yeah. and we actually curated a songbook. Like, what are the, because this. So, like, what's a song that works at a Jack Daniels? Stone event? Zeppelin. You Let, know? Okay, so uh, give, give me a taste. Of well, like, for example, well, but what we do, we do it as an acoustic trio because okay. we were trying not to like k- kill people with like blasting. We're not trying to make it like a festival gig, right? right. We want people to hang, right. but we want so we'll do like. So, uh, are people singing along with you or? No. No. We have, uh, we're on a stage, we have great sound, so, wow. you know, and so we play it as like a room. It's a hang. It's a it's a hang. It's a it's a dinner. It's four or five course meal. Oh wow! You're tasting. They they take care of Uber codes for everyone. They're they're really really smart. Um, but that brand more than other brands, I think, is closely linked to music. You know, uh-huh. you see you see a lot of images. You see Keith Richards, yeah, and, uh, Henry the Diltz photo oh, yeah. at the Morrison Hotel, uh-huh. the Sunset Marquee, right? Mm-hmm. You see those Henry Dills photos, he's just like coming getting out of a car. <laughs> you know, holding his like Jack, yeah. Jack uh-huh. or like Jimmy Page has the thing turned completely upside down. Yeah. But you know, or, you know, I drink responsibly and I encourage you to do the same. <laughs> uh, but but it's a, it's a brand that's really where the music thing really is a good fit, where, mm-hmm. where of course there's a lot of great uh, pro- similar products, great bourbons out there, but you don't right. you don't picture like a maker's mark with a rock a rock band singer. You know right. what I mean? You see right. what I mean? It's not the same thing. Yeah, Jack and Black so, really just 
says it. It really does. Yeah. And, and so the, it's, the events are great. I've been doing it for almost two years. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun. Did one last night. But there are, we played for just about three hours. Wow, so, you know, fun. again, almost a grinder set. We have some breaks. And um, the, the, on the most exciting front, um, my buddy there is the national brand ambassador. So he's, he's quite amazing. And we're, we're created a whole new, a brand new tasting experience that we might be taking on the road. Oh, we, just, nice. we just tested it in Key Largo, Florida a couple of weeks ago uh, for some of the people in the company and got really, really good reviews where we're incorporating tastings with live music. So like what, what song goes well with bourbon? That's an that's an excellent question. Okay. What what and uh, yes. Yeah, so, so Pink of Black goes well. Right, but no, we had to create original oh. things possibly, or or you know, so, so we're creating any... a new thing. No, I can't play. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah we're, see, we're, it's it's still a little under wraps. And, okay. And you know, there might be some science involved too, by the way, because about like the way what? the way uh, certain tonality and affects the palate and. We got kind of deep. We got very nerdy with it, but then we came back around to maybe doing music. So uh, I like it. It's it's. I'm very excited about it, and it's a really cool creative exercise for me. You know, like I'm not. Yeah. To do to pair it up like. This. I like that. Yeah, I'm so really. So instead of food and wine, we're doing yeah, music, music and food. music. Maybe, and, maybe, music yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm we'll liking see. it. We'll, we'll All right, very cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to the set. So how? Yes. So you <laughs> have. So chapter. you end up having a very dynamic relationship with with David Duchovny. What? what how does yeah, that? What um, happens there? Not at first. Okay. Not at first Tell because I'm predominantly there. On, we're talking about California Cajun, right? And Evan Handler, a wonderful friend of, of he's, he's women great. who write, and he's done the road. To, he's fabulous yeah. and an and amazing actor. Yes, and Pamela Adlon, by the way, I'm oh, friends with as he, well. She's I've best friends her. with Allie Willis. She was Allie Willis's first assistant. Allie was just here last week. Uh, Allie did uh, wrote September and, and oh I know Allie yeah the oh my god she's awesome friends. are you kidding me so she was just at Women Who Write last week I, I was a little starstruck when I saw her at my brother-in-law's restaurant my brother-in-law was the chef and I was like oh my god that's do you remember yes yeah. and, and she and Pamela was her first assistant when she oh, was a kid oh that's so funny so she I saw two of Pamela's three daughters really yeah they're awesome they're an awesome family and Pamela, does Pamela so, play um, a little bit maybe, okay. but not not um, actively. But what a cast that. that what show. a cast, right? Yeah. Because so, when I think of Evan Handler, of course I think of, of yes. them, the two of them. They were great. And together. so there was a character on the show that was uh, David Duchovny's character's daughter, right? He had a daughter yes. on the show. Oh yeah, she wrote the book that took him down. She wrote the book yeah. at the end, yeah. right? But she, uh, in the early days, she had like a little punk band. Yeah, put, yeah, 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 yeah. So I got, was brought on. To coach her because she oh. she didn't play any guitar. Okay, and so how how much time did you get to teach her? I had a pretty good amount of time, like mm -hmm. a month to start, like a month, uh -huh. and then maybe two weeks for. Did each she take episode. to it? Yeah, she is very she's very talented. Uh -huh. Really, what's really the actress's great. name? Uh, Madeline Martin. Okay, and she she's a dancer, so she's already used to like movement. Movement, yeah, mm -hmm. and. Um, so so that that happened for a while. I think I worked on six out of the seven seasons they had. There was one where he was just like a literary uh, uh, guy, like he went to school, became a professor or something. Yeah. Right? So there's yeah. no music so much in that one. Okay. So how to, did you start to work with him? Well, he uh, eventually. I think maybe he might have been going through. A divorce or something and he would just got kind of really into guitar and he would like approach me on set and he's like hey man look at this so and this is for his this, character this no. is for David but eventually we did we worked it into the script yeah yeah it was it was very interesting being on the set on this house on Laurel Canyon that belonged to the drummer of Jet it was uh wow this uh, Aussie band <laughs> Right, so that drum, the drummer owns his house. Uh -huh. California is using his house in mm -hmm. Canyon. And uh, who's the oh, who's the who's this amazing actress, young actress who is in take all the Taken Liam Neeson's daughter in Taken? What's her name? Please Google it soon. Oh, Thank um, you. I don't know. Because okay. uh, we need to know that. <laughs> okay. Um, so sh so so Duchovny's laying in bed and he's only wearing a guitar. 
<laughs> and she's she, she's not wearing anything. Uh huh. And I'm in the room, like I have to coach him because he's playing a thing of Joan Mitchell song, and he's yeah. playing like. Uh, Pay Paradise, you know, to play Big Yellow Taxi or something. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like a version. And well, I'm, I'm like, getting like a vision. I'm like this, picturing The room is like, tiny, right? I think right? I can remember that. The yeah. room is just, uh, and I'm like trying to make myself. Maggie Grace. Grace. Maggie Grace, that's it. Okay. She's, she, she's awesome. Um, and I'm just making myself as small as I can. I just <laughs> feel so weird like being in the same room with naked people. And there was a lot of sex going on in that a show. Lot. Oh my God. A lot. All the Non-stop. time, naked people. I got to uh, I got to jam with Marilyn Manson at, at the party. I remember party. when he was on the show. Yeah, he so he show. and I have, were hang, were kind of buddies for a while. <laughs> so it's it's very strange being in bed next to your wife texting with Marilyn Manson. That's, and she's like, really? Yeah, it that's was, really funny. I was like, story. I gotta not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't last long, but it was fun. He wanted to do a version of Hotel California because we played it live and we kind of. Shredded, like, like, like how dark and weird, but and you, Marilyn. But I kind of did the guitar, you know, it's like Hotel California, you know, like just so uh, you I really want. don't remember, but it was okay. maybe. <laughs> kind of a little more discordant. Just a slightly more twisted. It was yeah. it was all impromptu. Uh-huh. I just did it, and I played the solo, and he went, and you know, I don't know. Yeah, well, that's it was fun. Big. Me and Marilyn rock. So so you and David though you start you you teach him. Oh yeah, so he's like, hey, can we do some do some lessons? Because like, he's playing like crazy. He's like spending hours and hours. His calluses were frightening looking. Wow. Like, he's really playing. He's really into it. And so we start uh, learning. And now now I think he's he's. He's released three albums. You were with him when he did the first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and he's always great. Like he he played at the Roxy uh, at some point, and he had myself and my wife as his guests. Sweet, you know he's 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 such a, such a nice dude. Oh, sweet, that's he's nice. Re- to know. Yeah, he really is. He's really kind. That's very good to yeah, hear. Yeah, and he's really you know seems to be a good dad. Like I've seen him around his kids, and it's like wow, that's that's great. So He's just any, a great dude. I, anybody I else listening. that you've taught on set that was special um, that we might want to hear about? No, no one you would know. Like, the, okay. of, like for example, like on the on the James Brown biopic, I taught both the guy who had played Bootsy Collins, uh-huh. right, who's a very famous bass player. Oh, yeah. thought, right, Bootsy. Uh-huh. But what many people don't know is that the original band for James Brown, Bootsy's brother, Catfish Collins, was the guitar player. And he was epic. Really? So I was teaching this young kid um, Catfish Collins riffs. and, and Like, was, what's a Catfish Collins riff? You know, it was like... You know? So James Brown. You know, just, just that... Can, can you feel that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to go... Oh. Just, just that pocket that he created. Yeah. It's a musical term, folks, uh-huh. for you playing along at home. And uh, <laughs> just, that, just, that, just that, just the way the groove sits in a place, it just makes you feel yeah. like everything's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? And uh, so th- th- that was really fun for me, you know, taking those f- now famous musical parts and played by great musicians at that time in a great band kind of deconstructing it. The only bummer about that movie is, you know, it was produced by Mick Jagger. Really? But it was shot in Mississippi and I thought I was going to be able to go to the set, but it wasn't. How cool would that have been? Oh. Hanging out on the set with Mick Jagger. I can't imagine. Yeah. Me you haven't gotten to meet him yet, huh? <sighs> no. No. Okay. Close, but not. No. That could happen. It could. That could happen. Yeah. So, he's got kids. He's keeps well, making kids. Big, yeah, so maybe young, he's Mick gonna... is going to need a guitar teacher for yeah, one of his kids. I mean, you never know. So, uh, so are you still doing? Are you still teach? Are you still doing set work? Are you still teaching? What do you, um, what yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I, mm-hmm. I think I will always teach. Right now, m- my focus has shifted to a lot of kind of live playing, and I, I, and I do some really great session work. I, w- I work with a couple of really cool composers on Such here a... in LA. Well, the, the one guy that comes to mind is. Kurt. Kurt Farquhar, mm-hmm. he does um, he does the neighborhood, and he does uh, he does Black Lightning, 
which is kind of like a DC Comics. You know, that one's fun to work on because it's very intense and you can just go kind of crazy and do pretty trippy stuff and it's like, yeah, that's, that's what we, you know. Nice. The crazier, the better. Uh-huh. He's, he's a very, very talented guy. Brilliant and, and you know, well known for it. So that's, that's a, I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is the, being a working musician, you know, mm-hmm. being like someone who, whose uh, name isn't recognized by everyone, but, but we're all out here. We're doing okay. our thing. Was, did you ever have a plan B? Uh, not exactly, no. I, 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 no. I think the running thing with everybody who is successful, no, no plan no B. No plan B. Yeah, no, did no you, net. Did, right. Did you ever have to take a regular job? No, not since uh, after school when I went to work a year in the guitar center. As a, Okay, so Terrence Blanchard I interviewed last week, right? Terrence does Talk all about of the Spike Lee. Epic talent. And he just Black has Klansman, had the Black, score of Black Klansman. The score of Black Klansman is, is the most unfor- one of the most unforgettable amazing. movie scores. I said to him, so it's like rough. up there with for me with like Gone with the Wind. It's like I think of the yeah. movie, I think of the score. Yeah. Which doesn't happen often for no, me. It's like I, the Godfather. Yeah, something. it's it's yes. It just that is yeah. such an, an very, epic very score. Epic. Yeah. So he never had another job. He never yeah. did anything other mm, than yeah, what so, he does. Right. And but it's unusual. I mean, most musicians have to do a pickup here and there. But yeah. actually uh, lately most Should we call Postmates, see who shows up? <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's terrible. laughs> so okay, so so we've been talking a long time. So let's have, let's have so let's let's give us something up. that you're playing now that you're passionate about. Something that you've written lately that you love that you oh, want us to hear. To okay, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, this is terrible. Well, because this is a new voice. one. Well, okay, that's allowed. Okay, do do you, do you mind if I get topical on this? I'll play a no. little bit of it. This is a song. You remember when that whole like college scandal where celebrities are kind of buying their kids ways into somebody was on the cover of a magazine today who just got out of jail recently yes Uh, (laughs) you know i don't want to really see anybody go to jail but also this is just such bullshit right and Mm -hmm. and so something about between that phenomenon and maybe the um the uh being an influencer being a professional influencer yeah you know which i i get it that's great. And if you could figure out how to do that, that's, it's only going to make me sound old, you know, ranting about this shit. But, <laughs> but I am. Actually, the, inf- the whole influencer, they have, the influencers have like... Millions of Instagram followers. And I t- hundreds t- of millions of followers. I mean, yeah. like they have so many followers. And, and now legitimate talented people are asked how many followers they have before they can get a gig. Correct. And um, it's, that's what the world has come to. They can't, they can't, so an influencer, somebody who just gets on their their video thing and just talks about what they're doing that day, and we watch them go to the bathroom and go to the store, and they are the ones who are making all the money rather than the talented people who don't have enough followers on Instagram. I don't. You want to hear a song about it? Yes. <laughs> so that's really Is that good. what it's about? Yeah. Okay, that's what I want to hear. What's it called? Almost like living. And where can? Oh. Where, where can we well this is this is new right so I have a couple of really new songs I'm excited about so I'm going to be going into the studio song so this uh, soon and, and record singles so if they go like to carvoscalvo.com that's you can where get they the can... latest and, and okay. yes and um, but this is like kind of maybe it's a debut are we debuting a song here oh we're dropping maybe. a song we're debuting Drop. a song I love it can we hear it I want it uh, and also remember, I did a grinder last night. He this did a grinder. Time. There isn't any harm spoken, just a little love broken. You gotta take a chance to get ahead. But you can be like everyone by starting on the bottom rung and try to win a race you never led. With a starting gun at your head Almost like living You're shining like gold All debts forgiven And it never gets old Almost like living You bury your soul Is so depressing. It is very it depressing. It is so depressing. Because you know, I heard this story of uh, K. 
Kim Kardashian mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We dropped. We're talking about everyone else. Right? Yeah. So I heard this story about her went to Mexico with her kids, and she took in the, for the weekend. And in that weekend, she took seven thousand selfies or something like that. And that just was like, whoa, well, man. That's I understand it's her job too. You like you have to respect people that work and create a brand. I, I'm all for that. I'm not trying to be super judgy, but um, that's a little grossed out. When I go to somebody's Instagram feed and all they have are pictures of themselves, I, I can't. Yeah. I, I can't. No. It's just one selfie after it, and that's what their whole world is, a yeah. self-obsessed. Wrong. Yeah, it's just wow. not. Well, thanks for letting me play that. Thank well, you thanks so for letting much me be for playing Can I ask Thank a question you. real yes. quick? You, that vocal was so exquisite. I love Aww. your voice. Thank you. Wow. And what I want to hear a little bit is how did you get into singing? You said early no, on you didn't sing. Incredibly reluctantly. Like, kind of like, well, no one else is going to do it. So I have. I, I, did I you didn't train? Start, not really. What happened is. Good uh, question, huh? That's a really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was about time someone. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> your voice is beautiful that, yes. thank you I, I've, I've learned over the years I, I guess what happened I didn't start till really like 27 wow. I'm starting to sing uh-huh. and by then I'm so comfortable on the guitar but this is second nature I could do anything I want Right. but vocally it's like I'm not even sure I'm hitting the right pitch then and I'm like you know I'm not don't have that comfort level so it was really challenging to kind of you know, and later you learn that the technique, uh, there's technique to singing, but like 80 to 90% of it is confidence. If you think you can sing, you can kind of sing. I love that. You know, mm-hmm. and, um, but then I, I don't know I that that's true, a, but I love it in theory. I'm going to go ahead and sing Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in working with other singers and I had like a girlfriend that was a singer and she was taking Latin, I started like listening to how the singers warm up, listening uh-huh. to the exercises they do and listening and no- noticing that there are techniques and there I are see. things like... Like, my voice is very tired to talking right now, but mm-hmm. singing is a whole other thing. Right. You can still sing, even if your voice is like getting froggy and wow. sing, it's a different part of your voice. Although you were making excuses for yourself before I you started to sing. I always make excuses for No, no, when it comes to singing, you know, I still do. It, old, old habits die, die hard. But no, because this is like, it might be the highest register song I've written for myself. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, so is there a place that pe- I know they, that private events for Jack Daniels, is there a place where people can see Yeah, come out to the, the Rhythm Room uh, down LA, Rhythm Room LA downtown. It's on 6th Street near Spring. It's a great room when are you there. there? Uh, Wednesday, the, November 27th, which is the day before Thanksgiving, which is kind of like a Friday. Come mm-hmm. on out. It's from it 9 is. to midnight. Um, playing in Ojai, November 30th, with my friend, the uh, I think it's called the Ojai Junction or something. It's really cool. Uh, Bernie Larson, who's kind of a music legend, started this uh, music scene in I, I love Ojai. I, I had never been there. Yeah. And, um, Me t- I, same. I was there once. I was like, this place is amazing. Mind blown. Yes. Love it. Love it. And Very so cute town. That is the 30th of November. Okay. And um, something in a back... Uh, back with Jack Daniels in December, and and then we slow down for the holidays. You know, okay. like music, yeah. the music thing slows down uh, around mid December. Although I think I'm playing uh, a Christmas event at a, a place called the Melrose Umbrella Factory. Just gonna throw a tag out there because I love Melrose Umbrella Factory. Okay. Uh, Melrose Umbrella Company. Sorry. Okay. Uh, it's a cocktail bar on Melrose. It's nice. Really cool. And the, the gentleman's last name is actually Melrose. Oh, oh I thought you were going to say Umbrella. I got no. <laughs> I know. I had I was, you leaning now. I was going there. I was going there. Well, that's fantastic. Thank what you so much, What did we... Much, I Rose. can't remember anything we talked about. I, I, we don't... Go you, but I'm going to do watch parties and we can watch it all again. Really? And then, we can, then we can figure out what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, we were talking. No. I know I blabbed for a really Thanks, long time Mickey. at the beginning. It's I'm always sorry, a pleasure hanging with you. you know, Women Who Write is a brilliant, brilliant... Thing that you put so much hard work into and it's yeah. just amazing you've you've shown up for me a lot um wow. when i launched when my book dropped uh you and rob morrow came out yeah. and you played at, at my book launch and you've you've done women who write a couple of times and you did this you show up and i am so grateful and appreciate that so my much. pleasure and so grateful to chris to Crystal, is here, Crystal's husband here. um the music muse who um gonna be hosting him i think host- you should start up the year at, at Crystal, yeah. and also you have to follow I mean, Crystal Husband because she's she always is. This woman never sits still. True. She will tell you all the great music that's happening all over the California. She's an impresario. She's an impresario. You called me one today you too. Are. You did. Thank you. 
But anyway, Crystal is a fabulous one, and you need to follow her on Facebook, and, and, and she'll tell you what's happening with music. And Ron Frederick is, thank you so much, just stepped up and said, if you ever need anybody, I'm here, and fabulous. Cool, uh, I mean, I'm you, so grateful. And for your brilliant question. And yes. a great well, question. Finally. And, um, <laughs> fi yeah. and um, so on Tuesday, um, just before Thanksgiving, um, in the living room, Eileen Graff, who was in Promises, Promises, I Love My Wife, Grease, Sandy and Grease on Broadway. She was uh, the wife of Mr. Belvedere, and um, yeah. she's an amazing actress and singer, and, um, and with her husband, um, Ben Lanzoni, they're gonna be doing a couple of songs. I'm gonna be interviewing them. Um, also, Jay Kogan, who has won more Emmys than the law should allow for The Simpsons and Frasier, and he's hysterically funny. He did this show, and he was brilliant, and he's gonna be here. And our own Tracy Newman, who is a founding member of the Groundlings, wrote the coming out episode of Ellen, won an Emmy for it, uh, created according to Jim. She's an incredible singer-songwriter. She's a songwriter, too, yeah. yeah incredible singer-songwriter. Yeah. She's going to be uh, here singing. Lorraine yeah. Newman's sister is a little sidebar. Um, so that's on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, Terry Wallman, a great uh, musician and also has his own show is going to be here the night before Thanksgiving. So and much then, talent in this town. Finally, Lainey Kazan, who's who you have been willing to replace three times already. It stars in my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Which, which movie? 29th Street. It's a mob Christmas movie about Frank Pesh, who's the first New York State lottery winner. Anthony oh, Napolia. Yes! She's I his love, mother. I love that movie. Danny Aiello's okay, our husband. I, I love that movie. It's but so hard to find that movie. She's amazing. I love it. that movie, but it's... It, it does not even come in the class of my favorite year, which is my favorite movie, which Lainey Kazan slays that. She, she oh my it. God. And then my big fat Greek wedding. I mean, she's... Yeah. But I said my favorite Christmas movie. Your favorite Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. That's right, you did. And that, that is a great movie. I love that movie. Underrated. I, I Who doesn't seen love that a mob, years. a feel-good mob <laughs> Christmas movie? I have to see that again. So Lainey's going to be here on December 4th. Um, Malia is going to be here on December 11th. She's an unbelievable singer-songwriter. Um, Jane Gadsden's going to be here, like one of the greatest drummers of all time. And, um, and then on December 17th, uh, Women Who Ride Again, uh, Sarah Nimitz and, and Snuffy Walden will be here. Um, Adam Chester will be here. Mm -hmm. And wait, there's somebody else fantastic on the show that day, and now I'm spacing out. Anyway, um, so we'll see you next week um, here with uh, Terry Woolman. And tune in, uh, Women Who Ride is Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific time, and we'll be live on the Facebook also. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Vicky, I love you all. Crystal, Ron, you guys are awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We'll see you. We'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you.